think um, I think coaches generally want to be adventurous. They want to have ball in hand as opposed to kicking it away. And I certainly think that, um, that the facilities, the pitches, have improved so much that um, quite often previously in sort of November, December, January time, lots of rain, muddy pitches, and you had to kick the ball because you couldn't pass it. And I think now the pitches are so much better that the handling game is, 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 is can be encouraged. The shift has been to better short tactical kicking, so as, a, as an attacking weapon. Uh, Dave Olred, who was Johnny Wilkinson's kicking coach, always used to say it's the only time you can do a forward pass in rugby is by kicking the ball. Now I think people are more confident that when they get into the, um, the strike zone, that they can finish by scoring. I think you only have to look at the fact that an awful lot of drop goal attempts tend to come from advantage penalty situations rather than from preordained situations unless it's right at the end of a game when a side needs to drop a goal to win the match. It was the fad and it was the fashion in the, in the early 2000s and the mid 2000s and it's, it, it's, it's gone. There's definitely a push towards more tries but with the drop goal at three points I'm surprised more teams don't use it. Suddenly drop goals were all the rage, maybe they'll come back, but I, but I do think it is something that's been reserved for tournament play rather than points accumulation. The best players in the world practice generally more than other people. Um, if you go back to England's best and record-breaking point scorer of, of the amateur era, Dusty Hare. And Dusty had a telegraph pole in the middle of a field and he got his rugby ball and he hit the telegraph pole from wherever in the field and he practiced and he practiced and he practiced and he practiced. Well, fast forward however many years it is now, you've got players practicing, hitting a post. If you want to be any good, you've got to practice. Detail, focus, coach practice, all helps. Ultimately, it comes down to your desire to be any good. Every club now has one or two kickers whose job it is to, to make sure that those points go over and, and they spend the same amount of time that, that Johnny used to spend. He used to be the exception and now I think the exception is to, to spend that, um, that amount of time. Now they're actually thinking about how do I get my heart rate down, how do I get my focus there. You've got the Dan, Dan Bigger dance you know, that, that he does. You've got Owen Farrell with his snake eyes looking up at the post trying to track the ball and the exact thing. It's, a lot of it is about the psychology of it and um, you know, visualising the ball coming off the tee in the, in, in the right way. So uh, I think that, again, is just a development from more time as a professional. How do we make our kicking better? You could produce a ball that the modern day player could kick from one end of the field to the other. And it wouldn't be a hugely difficult thing to do, but that would render the game completely different um, than it is at the moment. As a spectacle, players kicking penalties from 80 metres, it's, it's amusing when someone can do it as a could do it as a one-off, but if that becomes the norm, I don't think the game would look particularly good. Certainly the ball has become more consistent. It's now a product that, that we know, you know, within each ball there's, there's only going to be a small deviation in terms of weight and size and, and that, that certainly helps from a, a consistency perspective and therefore they actually needed to make goal kicks.